On this episode of the Press Rewind Prince Lyrics Podcast, we're stuck in the era of bell-bottoms, disco fever, and big afros. You know, the 70s. I covered a handful of home demo recordings that uh, Prince made in 1976 on my last two episodes, and now we've moved out of the bedroom and into the studio. After Prince connected with local producer and songwriter Chris Moon, he recorded a wealth of music at uh, Moon's Moon Sound Studios in the summer of 1976. Some of these tracks, including early versions of Soft and Wet, My Love is Forever, and Baby, would be re-recorded and included on Prince's debut album for you. The vast majority of these songs, though, remain unearthed, including the song with the title of Aces, which made the final cut for the demos that uh, Prince took with him to New York City in the fall of 76, but I have never heard Aces, and uh, I would love to. It sounds fascinating, based off of descriptions of, of the song that I've read. And now, this trip that Prince took to New York City in 1976, it, it did not result in Prince getting signed by a record company. It didn't land him a record deal or contract. So, you know, he went back to Minneapolis and um, went back to the studio. This time, the studio that he would go to would be named Sound 80. So how this all transpired was Chris Moon enlisted Owen Husney, another former musician and current advertiser, to help Prince and Moon get more ears on these demos, these Moon Sound demos. Moon didn't want to act as Prince's manager. He was part of the talent. He considered himself the talent, so he didn't really want to be bothered with the day-to-day things and the minutia that uh, a manager of a talented person like Prince (laughs) would have to um, be responsible for. So he didn't want that responsibility. So he that's where Owen Husney came in. So Husney's job was not only to manage, but use his connections and advertising skills to assist uh, the duo in getting those um, songs heard. Husney would also enlist another, the help of another man, Gary Levinson, to help co-manage and finance Prince's next foray into studio recordings, and that's again at Sound 80 Studios in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Prince would re-record Soft and Wet at Sound 80, so that tells me that uh, he really valued and thought Soft and Wet was a winner of a track, something that was going to get him noticed to go from um, the Moon Sound recordings to Sound 80 to get another fresher take on the song, more polish. But he recorded other songs here, too. Sound 80 was basically his studio until he would get officially signed and start recording songs that would work out for the debut album on Warner Brothers Records. And one of the songs that he recorded at Sound 80 in 1977 is a song called Make It Through the Storm. But here's the thing about Make It Through the Storm. The lyrics to the song were written by Chris Moon. Chris Moon agreed to split uh, writing credit and and publishing for Soft and Wet. So that's a song they collaborated on and they mutually agreed to, you know, kind of split that. But there was two other songs that the two of them for sure collaborated on where they chose to take a different approach where Prince would receive 100% credit for a song that the two of them wrote and then Chris Moon would receive 100% of the credit for a song that the two of them wrote. The song that Prince ended up receiving 100% of the credit for, even though it was a collaborative effort, writing and recording effort, was My Love Is Forever, a song that wound up being included on the For You album after it was all said and done. Um, One of those initial Moon Sound studio demo songs. The song that... Chris Moon ended up receiving full credit for writing and publishing credit is Make It Through the Storm. Make It Through the Storm did not find its way onto For You, so Chris never received any sort of publishing or writing for an album that was Prince's. However, he did end up uh, getting full writing credit 
for the song because it ended up getting released, just not by Prince. It ended up getting released by uh, Minneapolis uh, musician, singer, Sue Ann Carwell. Well, Sue Ann and Prince worked together a bit in the late 70s. Prince really wanted her to be, you know, like his very first protege. What would have been his very first protege, but that collaboration didn't really work out in the way that Prince had, had hoped. They had recorded a version of Wouldn't You Love to Love Me together in, in the late 70s, I believe it was 78. And um, by all by Prince fault accounts, there's a version that Sue Ann recorded of Make It Through the Storm with Prince. I have not heard that version, but another version of that same song, Make It Through the Storm, ended up being recorded, re-recorded by Sue Ann for her 1981 single, Let Me Let You Rock Me. So that's the B-side. So Chris Moon ended up getting some, some writing and publishing off of whatever royalties accumulated from the sales of Sue Ann's Let Me Let You Rock Me single, since her version of Make It Through the Storm, which was 100% publishing credit given to Chris Moon, even though it was a collaborative effort between Moon and Prince. Moon with the lyrics, Prince with the music. So that's the story behind that song. And because the lyrics weren't written by Prince, as far as we know and as far as the accounts indicate, I don't think I will be covering that song on this lyrics podcast. I mean, it kind of defeats the purpose of the journey of me dissecting lyrics that Prince wrote so I can make connections between his writing style and things that you know he was talking about at the time and pointing them back to potential um you know real life scenarios and and looking for growth in his songwriting when he didn't write it but it's a very well-known song amongst um you know prince boot collectors especially of his early stuff because it's you know a nice crisp clean version of this song has been released and this was uh believed to be the 77 sound 80 version so we're going to listen to a little bit of that song just because it's part of the prince canon at this point and i i want to share it with the listeners of the podcast but i won't be dissecting the lyrics and um you know we won't really be talking about it make it through the storm this is prince's version However, another song that he recorded at Sound Aid Studios that same year, 1977, that also found its way out of the vault, out of the archives, is a song called We Can Work It Out. Or alternately titled, I Hope We Work It Out. So Prince's new management team of Husney and Levinson flew Prince out to Los Angeles in early 1977 you know, that whole East Coast trip didn't really pan out the way that um, Prince had hoped. And he was, you know, desperate to... I mean, he didn't want to give up. He, he was he was 18 years old, not quite ready to give up on his music career due to one setback. So, you know, uh, he asked Chris to help him get connected with some more people in Minneapolis. Those people were... That person was Husney. Husney helped further by getting... Levinson involved and now the two of them were taking Prince to Los Angeles to try their luck out west. This trip went better you know at this point he had more music to share he had you know, more muscle from a you know an advertising standpoint I think there was some some things going on where you know Husney use some of his savvy advertising techniques to get his foot in the door and get these ad, these uh, A&R and talent scouts out in Los Angeles to listen to Prince's music. And of course, you know, anybody was like, okay, cool, Who, who's the band? And once he said that it was not only there's no band, it's one person making all this music and singing all these lyrics. But uh, check it out, this guy's 17. He wasn't really 17, he was actually 18, but I think there was a little bit of a, 
and a, a little fib going on there, a little intentional fib to help, you know, allure the um, the record labels, you know, to help build the mystique around Prince as this wonderkind, you know, 17's younger than 18, so I guess they they thought that that was the, the right way to go. Nevertheless, it worked out. Warner Brothers ended up winning the bidding war to sign Prince, um, to a, to a three album deal, but also the caveat for him to produce himself, which completely unheard of for a new artist, and especially one so young, seventeen or eighteen. So when Prince returned to Minneapolis after the success of his Los Angeles trip, he booked some more time at Sound Eighty Studios, and recorded this optimistic jam called "We Can Work It Out." <laughs> The song is, is very clearly about his budding relationship with Warner Brothers. It's all youthful optimism and hopeful lyrics, you know, coded in a, a very slight metaphor about potentially a relationship with a person whose initials just happen to be WB. <laughs> I think uh, the obviousness of, of the true meaning behind the lyrics likely, likely meant that Prince had no intentions of this song ever being something formally released or, you know, added even as a B-side. It's, it's, it was more of a, a song that was written to kind of communicate his desires to work with Warner Brothers and, you know, I guess um, gratefulness for them to give him a chance and to offer him the opportunity. Of course, it's not... Um, it's not written from the perspective of somebody who is brash and bold. It's, it's like I said, it's hopeful and it's optimistic. I hope we work it out. I hope this works out. Like, I really want this relationship to work. I'm going to do my part. You do your part and we'll be okay. Of course, we know many years later, Prince had a falling out with Warner Brothers, but this is 1977. He, you know, he he's new to the industry and doesn't have the experience or knowledge about how record labels work, contracts work. He's learning on the job, so to speak. So, you know, I mean, if I was 18 year old, about to turn 19, I think maybe by the time he wrote this and recorded, by the time he recorded this song, I think he was 19, if the, the dates and prints fault are correct on the recording. But, you know, that's still very young. He was, a, he was obviously very ambitious. Had a lot of talent to back it up, to back up his ambition. But still, at the end of the day, 18, when he went out there, maybe 19 by the time he recorded, we can work it out. And this was basically a song written to accompany a... Um, you know, celebratory reception event that Warner Brothers was hosting in late June of 1977, you know, just as a kind of, hey, we signed this kid, we'd love everybody to meet him, let's see what he, you know, let's let's check out our, our newest talent. You know, a little bit of a putting Prince on display with the, with the record executives. You know, a dog and pony show, I guess, in some ways. And Prince was always, was a, especially early on in his career, I think he was better at communicating through his music than he was verbally. Uh, he'd become a much more confident public speaker as he, you know, as his career advanced and has, as he matured. But, you know, he was still a kid by, by all accounts, and he didn't have a lot of experience talking to, to individuals not from his community, um, and certainly much older than him. So I think to alleviate some of the awkwardness that he would inevitably feel at this event in L.A. in late June, the way Bobby describes it, Bobby Z, who recorded 
and whose drum playing is on the song, it was essentially a way to introduce himself to the record company without having to like introduce himself verbally. Like, hey, you want to know more about what I'm about? Here's a song. Now that I know your name, and you know mine, and it's just about time that we got together. We should make such beautiful music forever. Oh, together. The lyrics to the song are, Now that I know your name and you know mine, ain't it just about time that we got together? We should make such beautiful music forever. Together. Forever. Now that I know your name and you know mine, that's, you know, hey, nice to meet you. My name is Prince. Hi, I'm Warner Brothers Records. (laughs) Or I'm Mo Austin, you know, the the person who signed you to uh, Warner Brothers Records. So, um, ain't it just about time that we got together? Just a nice little rhyme, essentially pointing to, you know, the time is now. 1977 there's let's not waste any more time let's do this i'm signed now i'm ready to record i'm ready to release an album i want to get my name out there i want to get my music out there we should make such beautiful music forever well until the 90s at least <laughs> and then maybe a little bit later on as well Put your trust in me, I'll never let you down, because I know I can count on you to help me make it. Ain't no doubt about it, we can work it out, work it out, I know we can work it out, work it out, work it out. Put your trust in me, I'll never let you down. Again, very optimistic. He, you know, he's putting a good faith effort out there, and they trusted him greatly to produce his own album, to produce his own music. As somebody who's never produced a, uh, a song or an album before, this was a lot of trust to be put in it. But this was something Prince wanted, and this is what Prince told Owen Husney he wanted. So they pushed for it when it was time to um, to sign. And I know I can count on you to help me make it. So he's saying, hey, Warner Brothers, again, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to make amazing music. I'm going to do what it takes you know, I can listen to others outside, outside sources, outside influences, suggestions on how to make a pop song. Because again, there's another story or theory that, um, that Owen really pushed Prince to hone his craft when it came to pop songwriting. I think a lot of the songs, I mean, we heard the songs that he recorded in those home demos Many of them are fairly long. And then you've got uh, the Moon Sound Studio recordings, which, again, if the stories of the songs from those who heard them and remember them are correct, many of them are very lengthy and just, you know, like really stretch the stretch the boundaries of what songwriting and, and song craftsmanship should be, I guess. I mean, should is is maybe not the right word to put or to place on it, but if you're trying to grab mainstream attention, a 10-minute uh, a 10-minute funk jam that has some psychedelic aspects to it as well as um, a lot of instrumentation, complex instrumentation, maybe and written, maybe no hook <laughs> to speak of might not be the way to do it. And so Soft and Wet is it, and, and My Love is Forever, these are songs that have pop hooks, they have pop sensibilities, and they have catchy melodies. And this is more, I think, what you know Prince was trying to, to um, get better at and what he was working towards to be more proficient at that 
when it came time to record his debut. I mean, a song like Just As Long As We're Together really pushes those boundaries, but, I mean, you can you can have a little of both, right? I mean, you can have your pop songs, your simple three- to four-minute pop songs, and have your experimental material on the same record. You just can't, or at least if you're trying to, again, appeal to a wider audience, you shouldn't really just go one one way or the other. Especially the experimental way. So he he's doing his part. He wants Warner Brothers to do their part. Promote him. Support him. Give him the freedom to write and record what he wants. And get out of his way. Like, get out of his way. He didn't say that. <laughs> and I'm, I'm interpreting that. I'm projecting, I guess. Because... I know how Prince ultimately liked to work. In and, and even in 1977, he probably preferred to work this way. You know, as a singular artist, he needed help. Everybody needs help. But at the end of the day, it's his music, his vision, and he was always going to, for the most part, going to follow his own beliefs and his own path creative path. The rest of the song is essentially repeats of the, the chorus. Hope we work it out. I hope we work it out. Hope we work it out. I hope we work it out. Hope we work it out. I hope we work it out. Hope we work it out. I hope we work it out. Yeah, that's how the song. <laughs> that's how the song goes. And he throws in this making music naturally. Me and WB. He sings that at first. So making music naturally. Me and WB. He sings that, and then later on. In the song to at the very end, he just speaks it in his normal speaking voice. Music for the young and old, music bound to be gold. Well, that's a a nice start. I mean, platinum ultimately is <laughs> is is a better measure, but uh, certainly gold is for a debut album from an unknown artist. That would have been amazing. For you, didn't go gold uh, right away, but. Um, you know, he'd get there. It wouldn't take long. His second album definitely surpassed gold. A lot of more repeating. Hope we work it out. Hope we work it out. Until we get, the, again, the uh, the spoken phrase. Making music naturally. Me and WB. And then you get an explosion. And that's the song. So I think um, cool little song. It's not very long. It's... In more interesting for its historical historical context, historical perspective than it is as you know, a song that one would highlight in terms of Prince's um, you know, early musical genius. It's fun, it's cool, it sounds really clean. The version that's been floating around out there sounds clean. I dig it. It's just, you know, I mean, it's slight, and it was intended for a party, <laughs> and I think it served a, a wonderful purpose for that. So good job, Prince and uh, Bobby, in getting the song recorded. And uh, that will do it for this episode of the Press Rewind Prince Lyrics Podcast. I've been your host, Jason Brenninger. You can find the show, PressRewind.net, as well as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, the show has a Discord server that you can join and we can talk about Prince music. We can talk about anything you want. It's all open discussion, open discussion forum. Um, Patreon links, if you'd like to support the show, can be found on my website. And until next time, thank you very much. And goodbye. <laughs>
music naturally, me and WB.